God's word to his Bible. Prove it to you by the Bible. Did you accept it? I said, yes, sir. The Bible said so, then, then that's right. He said, well, in Matthew 8, the Bible said that they brought to Jesus all those that were sick and afflicted, that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken of the prophet Isaiah, he talked to our infirmity. I said, uh, he said, you see that now, brother? It was fulfilled right there. Every bit of it. I said, well, brother, that was a year and six months before the atonement was ever made. <laughs> that was before Jesus has ever died on the cross. There was no atonement at that time. Then according to your doctrine, then the atonement had more effect before it was made than it had this side. Had just begun the atonement. So then he went to use some great big words, seeing that my education was limited. I said, I haven't got the gift of interpretation yet. I said, you just speak the plain old language to me, and I, I, we'll talk about it. And uh, he went on, I said, he said, well, if it's in the torment so forth, I said, I want to ask you something, brother. Do you believe that divine healing is in the Word? I said, take him right here. And over Mark 11:24. He said, whatsoever things, when you pray, believe that you receive them, you shall have them, right. no matter what it is. I said, did Jesus place it in the Word? Divine healing in the Word. He said, yes, he mentioned whatsoever things. I said, that's right. I said, then if you put in the Word, the Word's ahead of the atonement. Oh, he said, ridiculous, Brother Branham. He said, no, sir. He said, that's sacrilegious. I said, oh, no. It isn't sacrilegious. I said, he's He's got to keep his word. And he said, well, I'll tell you something. One time as a king had a great kingdom and all his domain, he made the rules and regulations, the penalties and so forth. And when he did, he had a certain sin when it was committed. The penalty was dead. And every man that did this sin had to die for it. And one day a slave committed this penalty. He had to die. He brought him up before the king and the king said, I'm a man of honor. I keep my word, and you have committed according to my rules here and my kingdom, and being a righteous man that keeps my word, my word says here that there is no atonement for that sin. You have to die, and the only thing I can do is take your life. And the poor fellow said, begin to shake, and he said, now wait a minute, that straightened up. So, what can I do for you before I take your life? He said, the slave that was under the penalty of death said, I want a glass of water. And so the king said, give him a glass of water. And when he got it, the poor fellow fixed and had his head cut off and he was shaking, he couldn't hold it. And the king said, wait a minute, straighten up. I'm not going to take your life until you drink that water. And he threw it on the ground. I said, now what's he going to do? Now he's a man of honor. He has to keep his word, and his atonement says is, that there is, or his word says there is no penalty, or no redemption for this sin. And yet the king has spoke and said that he won't kill him until he drinks the water, and it's impossible, he's thrown it on the ground. I said, well, he said, that was a slip up on the king. I said, that's right, you think God made a slip up? Not, in, not included in the atonement when he put it in his word. I said, oh, brother, that's thinner than a broth made out of a shadow of chicken and starved to death. I said, that'll never work. No, sir. God put it in his word, and it's for those who believe. Only believers. All things are possible to those that believe. That's right. So we may not have faith enough. And I want you to know this at the beginning, that healing does apply a lot to the person that's praying for you. That's right. But not all together. It's your faith also. Right. You've got to have faith. Right. Watch it in this little words that we're fixing to speak. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Right. Now there's a lot of difference besides having faith in the mind and having it in the heart. The heart is a different mental faculties all together than what's in the head. The science didn't know that until just about two years ago. Did you know that? The Bible said that the man thinketh in his heart. The science said how wrong that is. 
said there's no mental faculties in your heart. It's in your head, your mind. You can't think with your heart. You want to think with your mind. Two years ago, I was standing on the streets of Chicago when they had a great big piece of paper about like that. I purchased one of them that science is found in the human heart. It's not in the animal. In the human heart, a little compartment that doesn't even have a blood cell, and they say it's the opposite of the soul. The soul rests in the heart. Oh, my. See, God's always right. They finally come to it, you know. They, they finally see it once in a while. So when God said that the sun run, and the sign said to stand still, that's what I was taught in school. Now over in California, the big observatories there, they say they were wrong. Now they scientifically proved it wrong. The sun runs also. Oh, there you are. Science has to say things, take it back, say things, and take it back. But brother, here's one book that you can read, and it'll never be tough back. God, eternal word, and you can rest your soul upon it. No matter whether you can explain it or not, I believe it anyhow. God said so, and that's it. You can just be that simple in your faith, then God will go to work for you. Yes, sir. He's obligated to his word. He says, all things are possible to them that believe. All things. Whatsoever things when you desire. Believe that you receive them. You shall have them. They'll be given to you if you'll just believe them. That's God's requirement. And faith is what takes the move God. Now, this was a tragic here. And a, yet a very uh, outstanding case that we ought to look into and give some consideration for a few moments. A strange thing, just a, a few days before that, Jesus had called these same men together and had given them power to heal all kinds of diseases, to cast out all kinds of evil spirits, and to cure leprosy, and to raise up the dead. And he sent them forth, and they went out doing it, and returned back rejoicing. But when Jesus took a trip and went up on top of the hill, up on the mountain, we find these disciples down in the valley, firmly completed, de defeated on an epileptic case. They couldn't handle that evil spirit. Now, someone said not long ago, if you had the power to heal the sick, like the disciples had. Now, these people don't believe it. We receive the Holy Spirit like they did at the beginning. But they just don't know the Scripture and don't know the Holy Spirit. That's right. God's promise said so. Right. And if people that haven't got so much theology jumped into their head, then they just believe God and receive it. That's all. Like a fellow was in a debate. He was holding the faith. He said, there is no such a thing as God. There is no such a thing as God. Kept doing that. A little old silly looking boy sitting back there with his hair hanging down his eyes. Overall jacket on. He come walking up one tooth out in front. Stood up in front of the infidel. And he said, start peeling an apple. He said, well, what do you want? So I just want to ask you a question. He said, well, I'll ask it. I said, well, wait a minute. Just kept peeling his apple. Took the core out of it. He said, well, sad, hurry up. Say what you're going to do. I have you throw it out. Go oh, just a minute. Yeah, he peel the apple, tuck a piece, put it in his mouth, and chew on it and swallow it. Said, I want to ask you a question. Is this apple sweet or sour? And the infidel said, I'm not eating it. I don't know. So that's what I thought. <laughs> How do you know whether the Holy Ghost or not? <laughs> Until you received it. How do you know Jesus heals or not? Until you received it. For no man can say Jesus is the Christ only by the Holy Ghost. No matter how much you read down the Bible, that won't work. The Holy Ghost has got to witness it to you, His resurrection in your life. Right. Or you don't know where the sweet are sound. <laughs> the poet said, taste and see the Lord is good. Who knows before he tastes it? It's he that tastes it knows. And the old saying is, the uh, proof of the pudding is the eating thereof. <laughs> so that's good. So this infidel was defeated in this case. Now, these disciples were defeated because of their unbelief. Jesus had gone up on the mountain. And you know what? I'm kind of glad that they were defeated right then. Because that just straightens everything out for me. 
When we see times and say, oh, here, I've seen Jones just pray for her. I've seen this just pray for her. Get ready up them. Sure. The child was prayed for by disciples. You had power to heal him. Jesus Christ gave us power to do it. Yeah. And they were defeated. Yeah. Certainly. It had nothing to do with it. Jesus is up on the mountain. And here, when the first defeat come out of there, the drama, the scene, here was all the pastors out. And out of valley question, huh? I thought he'd give you power to do it. Let's see you do it now. There it is. And the disciples are praying and casting out the devil or trying to. The kid just going right on in the epilepsy. But I have told you, such a thing ever did some kind of a trick. Days of miracles had passed, and here stood maybe the man, the father of the child, maybe went out and got his pastor. Said, Pastor, what do you think about these disciples of this fellow called Jesus of Nazareth that's going around here casting out devils, he said. Oh, it's a telepathy. There's nothing to it. Of course, uh, Pharisee Jones wrote all about it, you know. I'll tell you, we're having an association meeting in a few days. And uh, you bring your kid up. I hear them disciples is going to be around here, so we're going to take him over and challenge them to do it. And, Sir, now that's just the devil the way he works. Do something before me and let me see it. I had a man not long ago that challenged me on the radio first that he'd give a thousand dollars to anybody that could prove that they were healed. If I'm healing, I took two doctors with me and four people. Walked up to his steps and said, well, it's over in Texas where we got it. said, what we want to do is take a knife and cut a little kid's arm, and you hold it before his brother, and let us see you heal it, and then we'll believe you. I said, you need healing in the head. I said, there's something wrong with you. You're not mentally right, man. Certainly. Any man wants you to cut a baby's arm, hold it there, and then heal it before him. Well, certainly we have no one sensible. That's even beyond the answer of intelligence. That's right. Sure it is. Now, I said, what about this woman right here? And here stands her doctor that said she had cancer and now she's well. There's a doctor's statement. I want the thousand dollars for a missionary trip. He wouldn't give it to me. Certainly not. Oh, it's just as Brother Moore used to say, like the Irishman's owl, all fuss and feathers and no owl. That's just about the way it goes, too, on those things. Now, just simple trying to hide behind some kind of a church doctrine instead of coming out and saying you ain't got no faith. That's all. Right. Say you never received the Holy Ghost, you ain't got nothing to give you faith. Because God has got the faith. And just as you're filled with God, you're filled with faith. If you're a son of God, you're like God. He just speaks the word that creates itself. His word is a creating power. How's the world come here? He made out of things which was not. He just said, let there be, and here it is. That's right. He believed his own word. And this dirt that you're sitting over tonight is just the creative power of Almighty God. The creative word. That dirt is the word of God made manifest. Hey, Amen. That's what they said in our run. Yes, sir. The very dirt that you're sitting up on tonight, that is the word of God. Amen. Right. Amen. That post standing there is the word of God made manifest. I'm here tonight because the Word of God made manifest. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Doesn't that just give the devil a black eye? No, it is sure it does. It's the truth. It's the Word. Now, there they were. And he said, now when they all come out there, you bring your child out, we'll see how much power these disciples has got. Well, they got them all excited, you know. And here they were standing around the association, standing around their hands behind them, said, ah, there you are. Kids know better than what he was. Not a bit, not a bit. Where could you do anything with such stuff as that hanging around? Amen. Yeah, there it was. So the disciples were all trying to cast him away. All of them had the power now. Jesus said they had. That's right. That's Christ gave them individual the power right. to do it. And they had done it before, but said, let me see you do it now. Let me see you do it. Now, let me settle this in your mind forever. When you hear anybody saying that, no, it is the devil speaking through that person. Let me show you this by the word. The first time that the devil met Jesus Christ, he doubted him. Doubt always is of the devil. That's where the first sin comes. 
There is no other sin but doubt. Unbelief is the original and only sin. Committing adultery is not a sin. Smoking cigarettes is not a sin. Getting drunk is not a sin. That's the attributes of unbelief. Hey, Amen. You talk about, people say, Brother Dan, you say, he, tell the pastor, stand up and believe on the Lord Jesus, be saved. That's what God said. The trouble of this, I'll say, stand up and make out like you believe. But really believe this. Tell the whole thing. That's right. Faith. Notice, in the Garden of Eden, the very first original sin was because Eve doubted the Word of God. And when Satan met Jesus, and one royal offspring of Eve, the woman seed, he used the same technique he did on Eve. First thing was the appetite. And the next thing he said, If thou be the Son of God, do a miracle here before me. Yeah. Let me see you do something, a miracle. Now, when you hear a person say that, you know who's talking to that person. Yeah. It's the devil. Right? right. right. He said, let me see you do a miracle. Now before me so I can see it. Let me see you turn these stones into bread yeah. and eat yourself full again. I'll believe you're the Son of God. Jesus turned right back with the Father's word. He could have done something else. But to bring God's blessings to the weakest of believer, you could take, you don't have to have gifts. Just have faith in God's word. Jesus never used any of his gifts, any of his power. He used the Father's word. He turned around and said, It's written, man shall not live by bread alone. That's right. That's but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That's right. Amen. When he was a prophesier, we know he saw visions. He could tell what was wrong with the people, tell them what their secret of their heart was, and so forth. Said these signs would follow on to the end of the world. They put a rag around his face one day, some soldiers. And they hit him on the head with a stick and said, Now you prophesy, the devil. What was hitting him? Said, You prophesy. You tell us who hits you and we'll believe you. Tell us who hits you. got a rag around your eyes. Jesus never opened his mouth or said a word. The Jews up on the cross, on head Jesus on the cross said, Now, if thou be the Son of God, perform a miracle here before us. Put your hands loose and come down and we'll believe you. Be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus don't listen to the devil. Never said a word. See? So when you see somebody say, Let me see you perform a miracle. Remember, it's the devil. When he come into his own country, they said, Now we see, you heard about you healing over that country, we heard about you healing over there. Let's see you do something here among us. Let us see it. And Jesus marveled at their unbelief. Yeah. And many mighty works he could not do. That's right. That's Take your faith too. Because of what? The lack of his power? The lack of God's will? The lack of faith, unbelief. Because of your unbelief, he could not do it. Here are the disciples being defeated. And right in the midst of their defeat, down the mountain come the most lovely person that ever walked on the earth. The Lord Jesus, the Son of God. That's right. Still weak, perhaps, from under that great anointing, when he was taken into a vision there and foresaw, Peter, James, and John foresaw the coming of the Lord. Foresaw the order, how that Elijah and Moses would come first, then Jesus would come. They saw him, then the first coming, Elijah to Moses, and then turned back and saw Jesus only when he comes to, uh, and uh, add to the millennium. Notice, in this, the first thing you know, some of mine here, Pharisee Jones and them say, well, now look, there comes this guy, this is the chief man of all of them. He's the one who started all this here movement. So we go over and see what he's got to say. So when the disciples saw their Lord coming, they know he could do it. So they took all firing. And when they all gathered around, where was that? What did Jesus say? He walked over to that bunch of Pharisees with their collars turned around. So what do you oh, you poor dishwater preacher. What's he going to question you on that judgment? Amen. You don't stand the same way before him. So what do you question him about? What's all the fuss about? Why are you questioning these, my children? Oh, my, I can see him look around on them. And one spoke up, said, Sir, I see he's just an ordinary man yet to him. Said, Sir, I brought my child to your disciples. Said he has a foul spirit. He's dumb, frosts at the mouth, falls into fire and water. 
and said, I brought him to your disciples to cure him. And they couldn't do nothing about it. I can see Pharisee Jones and Patrick. Yeah. Couldn't do nothing about it. So now I'm going to bring him to you. And I said, the disciples couldn't cast him out. I said, I'll bring him to you. If you can do anything about it. If you can do anything about it. Yeah. Yeah. If. You get it? If. Oh my. If you can, do something about it now. Jesus stood and looked around. They're bringing him here. And when they brought the child up, now the devil showed off. That's the way the devil does. He likes to show off. Yes. He throws his kid in the worst fit he ever had. He fell out on the ground to try to scare Jesus. When he fell on the ground again to throw him before the frothing before the disciples, they got a little scared. But you're not going to scare him, brother. <laughs> but they will throw this kid into a real spasm. He fell on the ground and piled away and frothing and rolling around on the ground, having a just throwing the child in the worst he had. Because he knows his time of the hand. Jesus looked at the child, he said to the father, he said, how long has he been this way? From a youth. All yeah. oh, said he falls into the fire and everything. And when he got the attention, now let's draw a drama here. Oh my. Here's the valley, there's the mountain. Right up there on the mountain where God came down and overshadowed him. Yeah, yeah. Said, This is my beloved son, here he is. Yeah. And here he is standing there now. The mountain the father had been with him. The dove was on the lamb. The dove was still on the lamb, and he knew it. Yes. What's he trying to do? He had just got through saying before that. Very, very, I say to you, the father can do, the son can do nothing except he sees the father do it. Is that right? St. John 5, 19, I see visions. I do nothing except the father shows me the vision what to do. St. John 5, 19. I don't do nothing. Disciples are defeated. The father is standing a little hostile. Why? Well, now I know he's not going to do it because if he don't do it, if these disciples couldn't do it, then he can't do it. Now I begin to believe with you, Pastor, that this is just a bunch of faith, a bunch of work, a bunch of a mental or telepathy or something. That's all it is. Begin to think that in his heart. See how unbelief will catch a hold? Oh, I don't care how many times it fails. He's still God the healer. If I pray for 500 people tonight and all 500 die in the morning, tomorrow he's just the same healer that he was tonight. Has nothing to do with it. I don't know. God said so. That settles it to me. His word said so. Look at Elijah. When he went out of the old prophet, the dove was on him. So he, King Ahab, had called all the priests out there, and he, Elijah cut their heads off 400 of them that afternoon. Walked over and sat down on the mountain and said, Now I'm going to pray for rain. Three years of rain. And he put his head down between his little old bony knees and he prayed. Said, Oh God, send the rain. Said, Gehazi, yeah, go look up top of the hill and see if see any clouds back over the sea. Gehazi yeah, went up and said, Not a sign. Oh my. How unbelief would have caught that. But he's still gone. Yeah. So, oh, Lord God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Here the okay, he said, go back. Well, I just got through coming down. Go back again. Yeah. Look again. Looks like brass. No sign of rain. Oh, still. Stuck his head down again. Oh, Lord God, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Send us rain. Go back up again. Go to effort. Seven times he went up. After a while, Gehazi come down and said, Oh my. I see a little bit of cloud hanging out there about like a man's hand. How quick unbelief would have said, If that's all you can do for me, if that's all you can help me, well, I won't take it. But Elijah had something in him that knew that was God's sign. Well, I went to the meeting last night. I had a headache, been sick for a week or two, a month. I felt better. But not altogether well. I had a crippled hand. I could move my fingers, but my eyes. Oh, brother. How quick unbelief goes to work right there. Oh, I could see a little bit. I've been blind, but I could see a little bit. But maybe if I tried hard enough, I could have done it beforehand. Oh, you poor. I don't know how to call you. <laughs> Your excuse as a Christian. That's right. 
Elijah didn't do that. When Elijah had the first little bitty sign, he raised up and said, Hallelujah, so much. Roll up the rain barrels, get everything ready. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Yeah. I can wiggle that finger. Hallelujah. Get the crutches out from under me. Here I come. <laughs> Doc, I'll pay you my bill. I don't need it anymore. <laughs> Thank you, doctor, for all you've done, but I won't need your service anymore. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Yes, sir. She's coming down the rain pipe right now. Now I'm going to stay right in the spout to get every bit of it. Oh, he was ready. How quick unbelief catches a hold. And perhaps the father, that's the reason, said, If thou can. If thou can do anything for us. All right. Now, Jesus walked over to him to get a conversation. Like he did the woman at the well. Said, How long has the child been that way? Oh, he said, Since a youth. One time looking into their eyes. Something come over him. Then he said, have compassion on us. When he once looked in the face of Jesus, he could tell that was no mental telepathy. He could tell that there was something about that person that no one else had. And any man or woman that ever looks the cross in the face. The other day I got a little cross hanging on my windshield out there. I don't know how many said me, Brother Graham, that looks like a Catholic cross. When did the Catholics ever have the option on the cross? When did the cross ever become an emblem of Catholic faith? The cross is an emblem of Christian faith, yeah. not Catholic. That's right. No, sir. So why do you have it hanging there? Some fellow riding with me, coming down from Sellersburg. Kind of tearing me up. They like to do that somehow. I don't mind it. As long as you don't tear it in. So I said, why are you hanging there? I said, you know what? Every time that I turn my head up here in this country when summertime comes, there's a naked woman standing in the yard on the street or somewhere. I look at the cross. Amen. Amen. I never look at that. Amen. He never said no more. I said, and now I see where I was redeemed. In there, yes. I see his stripes I was healed. Once I was blind, I had no eyes hard to look with. And I promised him to heal me. I look at the right thing. Now, I know that's the right thing to look at. I look to Calvary. It's a memorial to me that my Lord died. He healed me. And there on that cross is where he forgave my sins. There on that cross where he took all my weariness away from me. On that cross, he healed me with his stripes. I said, I look at that. Turn my head. Look at the cross. All right. Depends on what you're looking at. That has a whole lot to do with it. Look at the cross one time. See how much different. Now, when this man looked in the face of the Lord Jesus, he was anointed. He was the anointed God. Here he was standing there, the anointed man, God in the man. And when he did, there was something caught the man. Look over if he said, have compassion on us. Now he's on the right grounds. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He's coming on the grounds of pleading mercy. That's right. He's coming to the mercy seat. Yes. That's the only way you'll ever get anything from God is come Amen. to the mercy seat. That's right. Amen. Not judgment. Right. Not upon self, but upon the mercies of God. Now he's on the grounds for healing. There's no if in it. He's placed it on Jesus now. Watch. No more sir. Now he says something different. He's Jesus then places it right back on him. He said, Oh, can't thou believe? Can you turn Pastor Rabbi Jones down over here? Can you cast all this doubt away from you? Can't thou now believe? And the father looked him in the face. Said tears running down his cheeks. Something has struck him. A change had come in his heart that very moment. And he said, Lord, I believe. Forgive me so many words. Forgive me for my unbelief. All this time I've tried to believe the Pharisees. I've doubted when the disciples failed. Forgive me, Lord, of my unbelief. And with tears rolling down, the Spirit of God has struck his heart. And he said, Lord, I believe. Forgive me on my unbelief.
unbelief, or the Bible quotes it, help thou my unbelief, but forgive my unbelief. There he stands. What is it? Now watch. A few moments ago he was served. If thou can. But when Jesus caught his attention, he wasn't served. Capital L-O-R-D. What happened? When he come to the mercy seat, he found mercy. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you think I'm crazy. Maybe I am. Let me alone, Lord. I'm happy this way. If thou can. Pastor, I believe you have been right. If thou can. And he looked at him. But how long has he been this way? He said, since he used He said, then have mercy on us. The mercy seat. He found forgiveness. Ask forgiveness. And repented. And now, Lord, I believe. Forgive me my unbelief. Lord. That's right. Lord means ownership. 